Okay, welcome to the buyer's guide for buying your first barbell. This is for someone that hasn't bought any equipment yet or looking to buy a barbell and wants to know just basically what's the difference is. I'm not gonna get super crazy technical with all that stuff. It's just gonna be for someone looking to buy a barbell and they wanna know what to look for. We have 10 barbells in the gym, so we have quite a few and uh, we know a little bit about you know what they all do and, and we've used them all so we can kind of give you a good idea on what to get. Uh, Trevor, I know you asked for this, so finally <laughs> we're here. I'd rather be right my quad right now, but I can get get this video done for you guys so um, 10 things to look for or 10 differences on barbells number one is knurling knurling to me is going to be the most important thing for sure knurling is basically the aggressiveness of this little machined area here on the barbell and how it grips your hand especially when you're getting sweaty or you're working out hard the more aggressive the grip, the better it's going to be, or less your hands are going to slip, unless you use a chalk or something like that to try to keep your hands from getting uh, super sweaty. Okay, knurling, you're going to look for something that's aggressive, but you can also get something that's not as aggressive that still grips really well. Um, the difference is you're going to look at power bars, so a power bar is going to have a more aggressive knurling than say a standard Ohio bar. I should also add that all these bars are from Rogue. Most of them are from the Boneyard. If you're looking to save some money, buy them from the Boneyard, that's what I did. It's a lot better. You can save a, you know, a few hundred bucks here and there and still get the bars you want. So knurling's number one. You can have aggressive knurling in a power bar or you can have a little bit easier knurling in an Ohio or a regular bar. But you want to make sure that you buy a bar that has good knurling, good reviews on the knurling, or put your hands on it and you know come and try somebody's uh, barbell, see if you like it. If it's too aggressive, it's going to tear your hands up. I mean, it just is, uh, which you get used to it. It's not a big deal, but you might want to look at that before you buy one. The second thing that I think is probably one of the most important things as well is coating on your barbells. So the coating, now this is a bad example right here. None of these bars have any coating except for the very top one has actually got a zinc coating on it. I do have a Cerakote bar, two Cerakoted bars, and a black um, zinc uh, oxide bar as well. Now, no matter what coating you go with, whether it be zinc, black oxide, Cerakote, chrome, whatever it is, it's going to add a little layer of something, of a material to your knurling. So it's going to kind of dull your knurling down just a tiny bit. Now it's not super noticeable, but it's something to think about. If you want more of an aggressive knurling and you want to make sure that when you grip your bar, there's nothing between you and the knurling at all, go with raw steel. These bars, these four, or sorry, five here are all raw steel bars. That's my favorite bar. Now, where we live, we don't get a lot of moisture. Corrosion or rust isn't a thing here. Uh, if you're in a place that's humid and it's get, it does have a lot of moisture, you live up in Canada or somewhere, raw steel is not your friend. You're going to have rust on your bars unless you oil them all the time. So that's something to think about. If you go raw steel, you have to oil your bar and take care of it a little bit more than say a Cerakote or you know, a zinc uh, bar. I personally feel like the zinc coating on this bar is actually a little bit slippery. It's probably one of my least favorite coatings you could say. Uh, I like the feel of Cerakote better over zinc if you're going to pick one. Uh, Cerakote, of course, it's not indestructible. It will scratch. It will show, you know, some wear on it. Zinc will definitely show wear. Uh, anyone can attest to that that owns a, a black zinc bar that it wears out. Um, again, it's to prevent it from corroding and prevent it from having rust. So that's the biggest reason for having a coating on your bar. Um, number three is diameter. So the diameter of the actual bar and the shaft of it is different depending on what kind of bar you buy. It can be anywhere from a 25 mil you know, all the way up to 30, 32 millimeter bar. So most women's bars are 25 and that's to account for smaller hands. Um, 
most Olympic bars are going to be about 28 millimeter. A deadlift bar like this one here is actually 27 millimeter. And then the one below it, this is a squat bar, is 32 millimeter. You're going to see most bars around the range of between 28, 28 and a half, and 29 mils. Honestly, there's not a there's not a huge difference between those three. All three of those will work just fine. Um, I think the bar diameter is probably less important um, than some of the other things we're going to talk about. So, number four is actually how it's made, and in terms of does it have center knurling or not. This is the section right here, you can see it on these two bars, that has knurling in the middle of the bar. That's going to come into play, for, for me and for most people, I think the only real lift is probably going to be somewhere when you're doing squats and just how well that's going to grip onto your back. Um, personally, I like to have some center knurl when I'm doing squats. This squat bar here is actually knurled all the way across to give you the most amount of grip. It's not necessary by any means. Um, if you're going to buy one bar that kind of does everything, you're probably going to want center neural, but that's a personal choice and it's a personal preference. Center neural can be detrimental when you're maybe pulling deadlifts or something like that. You didn't want to scrape it up your, your shins. So center neural or not center neural, bit of a personal choice. Depends on the type of lifting you're doing and you know what, what works for you. Number five whip or tensile strength of the bar so they basically rate the shaft in how much it's going to bend and how strong it is and it's the whip and tensile strength are kind of two different things but to me they go together um, where you want more whip is in say a deadlift or maybe olympic lifting where you want to be able to, to snap the bar off the ground and get a bit of whip on that um, some olympic lifts they want it to be dead straight, no whip, no nothing. So basically the bar is going to be just solid, straight all the way across and stronger, especially for heavy, heavy lifts. If you're doing super heavy stuff, you're going to want a stronger tensile strength. Honestly, for the most garage gym owner, the most average guy training, I mean, I'm in my forties, I'm training. I am not, <laughs> I'm not pushing the tensile strength on any of these bars uh, by any stretch of the imagination. So, you know, it's one of those things, kind of look at what you lift, how much you lift, and then you make a decision from there. I wouldn't beat yourself up about it if one bar is a little bit, has a little stronger tensile strength than another one, you probably won't notice the difference too much. Unless it's in deadlifts, you want that whip. Number six. So number six is the type of alloy. Notice I said alloy because it's steel, you can have steel stainless. Um, but it's not truly stainless and I'll show you right now if you look at these bars one of these bars here is a stainless bar and if you notice this magnet sticks to oh, sticks to to all of these bars this bar right here is actually a stainless uh, Ohio but it's not an Ohio bar this is actually Matt Chan so this is a stainless Matt Chan bar Stainless is what they call it, but it's actually not. It's an alloy, so it's going to have steel in it. Um, it's just going to be a little more rust resistant. I like the stainless bar. I think it has a great feel. Uh, it's one of my favorite, you know. If you can pick the, my favorite alloy to get, I would say stainless, just because it doesn't rust, you know, or resist rust the most, and it just feels the best in your hand. Just no coatings, nothing. Just get a stainless bar. They're more expensive. But, you know, if you're going to buy one bar, it's probably worth it. There's a hardness rating. Uh, that one there is really less important. It, you know, I mean, for most of us, we're not going to be scraping these things and banging them around too much. Hardness rating is just basically how well they can uh, absorb an impact or how soft the material is. Um, that's number seven. So number eight is length overall. You'll see that most of these bars are a standard length overall. The two bottom ones are different. This is going to be a deadlift bar, and then the squat bar is going to be a little bit longer. Same with the deadlift bar. Women's bars will be a little bit shorter as well. There's some specialty bars that Rogue makes, the C70s, uh, C70S as well, that have a shortened uh, collar basically. And, you know, it's just, to me, that would be a benefit if you're training and you're having many people, you know, a bunch of people line up in a confined area and you want to have a bit more space between each person's lifting, it makes sense to get a shorter bar, a custom bar like that. 
Other than that, you don't really need to worry about it, to be honest. Um, number nine, talking about markings. So you're gonna have different markings on the bar. Some have both. And one marking is gonna be a power lifting marking or an Olympic lifting marking. You'll notice some bars have one. <laughs> So power bar, it's gonna have a power bar. This is Ohio, uh, this is actually an echo bar. It has just the Olympic lift bar. Or you can just get something like this one here, an Ohio bar that has both markings, then you're covered. Uh, I like that, it just, it just it's easier. This Matt Chan bar has both markings. It's really easy to line up where your hands are gonna go. And that's mostly for when you're you know, benching or maybe not so much deadlifts, but you know, benching, squats, and some Olympic lifts. So you know, just kind of find out where your hands are gonna be. Number 10, so the last thing to look for when you're buying a bar is going to be bushings. Now, this really comes into play if you're Olympic lifting um, or you're a you know, professional or amateur lifter and you need the spin on the bushing. For me personally, uh, it makes no difference. I could really care less what kind of bushings they are. Uh, you can have ball bearing, brass bushings, you can have like a carbon bushing. Um, yeah, it makes, it makes a small difference on how much it spins, but for the average lifter, unless you're an Olympic lifter or you're professional, uh, it's not going to be a huge difference. Personally, that's not something that I worry about when I'm buying a bar, as long as it's a quality bushing uh, from a quality manufacturer. I'll just run down what these six bars are real quick. Top one's a Rogue Echo Bar. This is my, this is actually the first bar I bought. Um, yeah, I wouldn't buy that again. <laughs> I would just tell you right now. Now, I regret buying that. That's probably my, uh, uh, for, you know, overall regret. I would not recommend this bar. It's in zinc. Honestly, the zinc coating is slippery. Put your hands on it. Uh, I don't like it. It only has the one marking for Olympic lifts. Um, so yeah, that's a bar I would not buy again. I don't recommend it. It's just not something that does it all for me. The second one is a Ohio Power Bar. I really like this bar. That's an awesome bar. That You could buy that and do just about everything. The second, the third one down is a Rogue Ohio Bar. Another great all-around bar. The knurling's not as aggressive, so it's more, you know, everyday bar. You can use it all the time to grip up your hands. This bar in the middle is my favorite bar. If I could say just buy one, or if you want to just look for one bar, it does everything. The Matt Chan bar in stainless does everything. It's a great bar. The center knurling on it is actually kind of like it's been rolled, so it's it's not as aggressive, but it's there when you need it. Um, I like that. So that's a great bar. The Matt Chan bar is a great bar. This is uh, out of the Boneyard in stainless. Most of the time you'll see this in, uh, I think, Black Seraphim. So if you're looking on the website, it'll be Black Seraphim but it's the same stainless bar. This one here is a deadlift bar. Um, obviously, I just use it for deadlifts. It's awesome, it has a ton of whip. Really nice bar, it works great. And then the bottom bar is a Rogue Squat Bar, 32 mil. It's fatter, it's got aggressive knurling all the way down. It's a great squat bar. I'm nowhere near even close to really testing that bar, putting it, putting it you know, through its paces, so yeah. You don't need it, I don't even need it, but uh, it's a cool bar to have, I like it. So that covers the barbells in the gym. Um, we have some women's bars and some other stuff, uh, some specialty things that we'll go, we'll go over in another video, but wanted to give you a, a breakdown and a top 10 on the differences between the bars and 10 things to look for uh, when you're buying yours. All right, have a good one, see you.